Okay, I'm back with another Peter and Gordon video. This time we're going to actually listen to some of their tracks. Now, some of their hits, you probably know they had five or six big hits, and they sound like this. I don't care what they say, I won't stay in a world without love. Nobody I know could love me more than you. I'll still hear someone say, I don't want to see you again. Go to pieces and I almost die every time. My baby passes by. Seventeen, a beauty queen, she made a ride to cause the scene in the town. Every suit of armor ever made has a kick, chainmail pants with a missing link. But on the other side, some of their lesser known tracks and deeper album cuts sound like this. If you want to feel all right, just walk around London at night. Once in every million years, sharpens his beak on the mountain and swiftly disappears. Peter and Gordon actually had 10 albums of material, which is a lot. And if you just look at the hit singles, um, they follow a pretty, they follow a British Invasion style. But they had a lot of other types of music that they ventured into. Some good, some not so good. We're going to look at some of the really good stuff today. Now, the first album um, has A World Without Love, their biggest hit, number one song. And one song I'd like to point out on here that I really like is called If I Were You. This is one of their, this is their first self pen song. If I were you, I wouldn't. In addition to If I Were You, the other song on here I really like is a traditional song called All My Trials. River Jordan, it's muddy and cold. Moving to I Don't Want to See You Again, album number two. They had a couple very interesting slow songs on here. One is called Land of Odin. In the land of Odin, there stands a mountain. This record features two more Lennon McCartney songs that the Beatles didn't record. The second one being Nobody I Know. First one's the title track. Um, both minor hits. And I would say this record is probably their heavy, most heavily British beat album. And two songs on here that are pretty good and I would recommend is Two Little Lovebirds and Leave Me Alone. Still for me, you are the only one. It's just a feeling like cold air beating down the sun. Two little lovebirds on my windowsill. Makes me know that. All right, the next album is called I Go to Pieces. And this record, aside from having a great cover, has a few pretty good songs on it. Uh, the one I'd like to highlight first of all is the, the title track, I Go to Pieces, written by Del Shannon. When I see her coming down the street, I get so shaky and I feel so weak. Now, the next song I want to 
bring up is called Someone Ain't Right. And this song is mentionable because they use some crunchy guitar in this song. And well, crunchy guitar by Peter and Gordon standards. So if you like guitar like I do, this might be a song to check out. And finally, the last song I want to mention is called I Don't Care What They Say. This was one of their original compositions, and it, sho it really shows they could write, because this song, I think, is, would have been good enough to be released as a single. I don't care what they say I just cried when you went away All right, so True Love Ways is the next album. This is in 1965. And they were still having some minor hits, like Don't Pity Me. But the song I want to talk about is called I Told You So. And this is a self pen song by them. And it's quite a good ballad, actually. And I think I, they must have intended it to be a single, because they also did a French version of this, too. Now, this is an example of them. They did a couple of different versions in different languages of their songs, Italian, French, German. And I think these were released in those countries that way and they were trying to cross over in as many ways as they could. I hear you're planning for to leave. One, two, three, four. Le voilà seul, seul dans la nuit. Peter and Gordon sing and play the hits of Nashville, Tennessee. Now, in my prior video on Peter and Gordon, I stated this is a lousy album. I do not like this album. I think Nashville, Tennessee is not the vehicle for them at all. Sweet dreams of you. This album from 1965, which is my least favorite of theirs, is followed by my most favorite. 1966 called Woman. Now this record, they really focused on a lot of film songs and they really do a great job of covering them. The arrangements are, are good, they're suited to their voices. And one I want to play for you first is called Somewhere from West Side Story. There's a place for us Somewhere a place so two other really good songs on here that are films, songs from films from major motion pictures are High Noon and 310 to Yuma. Do not forsake me, oh my darling. I want to ride again on the 310 to Yuma. The reason why I like this record so much is, like in a lot of their other albums, they try to show a lot of versatility, and sometimes the, the vehicles they choose, they're not suited for that, but it, in this case, this album, they seem to be suited in just about every song they try on this, and I just played for you a couple of songs from films, while well, they also venture into jazz a little bit here with Brown, Black, and Gold. They also do a credible cover of Let It Be Me, the Ever Everly Brothers hit, which is, which is kind of how they started. They were kind of an Everly Brothers wannabe group when they started in the first place. Okay, Lady Godiva, this is 1966. Uh, the title song was a hit that I played earlier in the montage. 
But this album contains my all-time favorite song by them. It's called Morning's Calling. And this is their venture into folk rock. It's almost a little bit psychedelic. It doesn't quite get there. But it's an original song that they wrote, and the guitars are great in it. As great as that song is, they really stumble with a Beatle cover called If I Fell. This is the Hard Day's Night song uh, that Peter Asher does by himself. I gotta play you a little bit of this. It has to be heard to be believed. Sad if our new love was in vain, so I hope you'll see. So Night and Rusty Armor, this is, we're in early 67 now, and um, they really, this is, I would say this is maybe the next best album. Um, obviously the hit was Night in Rusty Armor, but one song I like that's kind of a guitar song is the song called To Show I Love You. Another great folk rock cover that they do is Homeward Bound, the Simon and Garfunkel song. And they do a, a really nice version of that as well. Oh, well my thoughts are shaping, oh, well my music's playing, oh, well my love lies waiting silently for me. So aren't those nice harmonies? They can really sing when they want to. All right, so in London for Tea, 1967, great song on here by Cat Stevens called London at Night. And this song has that real Carnaby Street feel. And um, this, this is probably the best song on the album. A Londoner, I'm walking around London at night. Oh, what a beautiful sight if you want to... So London at Night, like I said, is the best song on this album because when they start to do some, co some of the cover songs on here, they, they made some bad choices. Uh, I'm Your Puppet was one, not a good choice. And Sally Go Round the Roses. I mean, this is getting really outside of the realm. Um, for, some, for as good as the covers they did on the previous two albums, they really were running out of good covers to do on this record. Okay, the final album that they recorded was from 1968. This is Hot, Cold, and Custard. This is their attempt at psychedelia. And the first song on here is called I Feel Like Going On. This was a single that they released. It didn't chart. And it's got a lot of the Sgt. Pepperish effects on it. So a lot of the songs have some of those effects, um, and they're not very, very well done. These songs on this album are pedestrian, and there are a couple highlights though. So the one I like the best is called Never Ever. Just one look and I can see What you try and oh so hard to do to me Now I find that you are not the kind of girl that I should ever see So Never Ever, that was a Gordon Waller original. And, uh, you know, pretty strong melody. That's, I would have released that one as a single. I don't know why they didn't. Uh, the other song that's quite good is called Cause You're a Star. This is another Gordon Waller song. That don't get you very far. Staring at the floor and at the ceiling. So half this album was written by Peter Asher, the other half by Gordon Waller. <clears throat> and um, unfortunately, this was not critically acclaimed. Nobody really made note of this album. Um, the singles didn't even chart. And I think they could see the writing on the wall in this one. So after this record, there was one more single. That single is called I Can Remember Not Too Long Ago. And the B-side is Hard Time Rainy Day. And the B-side, I find out, I find is the better of the two songs. You, my love, have gone today. The pains I feel won't go away on this hard time rainy day. That was their swan song. And that also did not chart. And it's quite rare to get, that's a hard one to get. So look for that one on Capitol. Now, meanwhile, in 68 and 69, Gordon Waller was recording some solo singles. None of those charted as well. 
and Peter Asher was making his transition into Apple as an in, in our man. Well, those, those are just some of the, the highlights of some of the deeper album cuts I wanted to play for you. And part of the reason I started this channel was to delve deep into those songs that probably nobody has listened to. I don't want these artists to be forgotten. And they've got some great hits, but they got some great non-hits too. And that's kind of why I wanted to highlight those. So make sure to watch my other Peter and Gordon video on artist history here on this channel and look for more here on Pop Goes the 60s.